This is the first meeting of 2023 of the Town of Deerfield Planning Board. I'm calling it to order. And um, here, let's see. Andrea, can you read our new intro here? Thank you. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022 which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. And here's a phone number and the meeting ID and um, the new URL. Right, all of which are on our website. The website, excellent, okay. So board members in attendance, um, Denise Mason. Here. Andrea Liebson. Here. Kathy Sylvester. Here. Kathy, Kathy. Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba here. And um, A Emily Gaylord and um, Rachel Blaine are absent. Emily Wolf Cool present. So we do have a quorum and um, our minutes of December 5th are still pending. So we will have those next week. Um, old business, um, our public hearing continuation for the VESH application. It's a little bit hard for me to see who on Zoom is um, Representing Vesh, could you identify yourselves, please? Yes, uh, uh, Michael Petrin with VHB. Thank you, Michael. And I, I apologize, John Furman had a conflict and could not attend. So he asked me to give you a, a quick update on uh, a, a small modification uh, for the project. I understand it's under peer review right now mm -hmm. um, and we don't have peer review comments back yet, but I wanted to present again, a, a small change. Can I share screen? The possible. Um, uh, Amy, can you uh, do share screen? Otherwise, I do have your uh, your plans and whatnot here. So, Amy, can you do share screen for Mr. Present? Pet Petron, is it Petron? Petron? Petron's fine. It's Petron, but that's okay. Either or. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike, you can do that, right? From where you are, you can share your screen. Yes. Okay. So great. I'm going to, and I don't know uh, what you guys can see. Can you see my screen yet? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. And, and is it is it visible? So here's here's Greenfield Road, the entrance to Vesh, uh, the the existing parking lot and the expansion here. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. What Vesh would like to add is uh, a concrete pad for a modular building. This is gonna be for uh, a CAT scans here, right here. Um as part of it, there is right now. Uh, a gravel drive here. Let me flip to a different plan. Right now, uh, a bunch of the employees jump the curb, if you will, right in this location. Uh, they have a gravel driveway. Um, we're going to remove that gravel. Um, there's also a wooden uh, deck here that we're going to be removing as well as some stairs. The proposal is to uh, reconstruct this walkway here so it's all level to this to, to this concrete pad for the new modular building. Um, they would construct a new ADA ramp that would connect to the existing sidewalk here. So just some minor modifications that they would like to add as mm -hmm. a part of this uh, proposal. All right, thank you. Um, Does anyone have any other questions? We will avoid uh, making jokes about PET scans or CAT scans, right? Um, questions from the planning board? Here, I think our next step, in fact, then would be, there was a question from Mr. Furman as to whether or not this should be forwarded for our peer review. And I think since this is an updated uh, site plan review, part of the site plan review packet, it, it would then go forward to the um, to the peer reviewer. But are there any other 
Yeah, it's my it's my understanding that it has been forwarded to the peer reviewer. Good. Okay. So we have, have received this update. I think there was a slight, I don't know, a, a very small comment about the question of wetlands or conscom. Is is the conservation commission also looking at this? I I I can't I, and I, I apologize. I am just filling in, so I, I can't comment on that. John could probably comment it on on the next meeting. It would be for informational purposes only for us too. So um, I don't think we necessarily need to have any vote on including this to your um, site plan review packet. It's been forwarded to to review, so that's good. So the only thing really would be that um, and this for better safe than sorry might be. Um, to have a a vote on uh, continuing the public hearing, um, I believe that the peer review should be available at our next meeting. So uh, we would we have um, a hearing continuation request that we've taken the liberty of filling out for Vesh um, that the hearing be continued until February sixth at seven p.m. Um, is this fine with you? Yeah, 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 it is. It is. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, Amy, you have a question? Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to let you know that I have forwarded that um, the continuation form. I forwarded it to uh, Mark early uh, last week. And so he or Mike can sign it and send it back. And then Annalie, you can sign it and we should be good. Okay, so you'll have me sign the one that is received with their signature. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, planning board, are you, um, could I have a motion to continue the public hearing and on the VASH site plan review um, and storm water management plan to February 6th, 2023? This is Andrea, I so move. Thank you. I second that, Denise Mason. Thank you. And um, any further discussion? All righty. So, um, Denise, we'll call the question. Would you like to vote, Denise? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Andrea. Andrea, yes. Kathy. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Uh, Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. And Lee Wolfkul, cool, yes. So, the um, meeting or the, uh, the vote passes. I will call vote since we had Kathy attending with Zoom. All right. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Petron. Yep. Thank you for your time. I appreciate uh -huh. it. Glad to glad to do it. Uh, so next under old business, we have the condominiums at Sugarloaf. And since I'm in a butter to a butter, I will pass the conversation on this over to Vice Chair Denise Mason. Okay. Thanks, Annalie. Um, just to remind everyone that this is not a public hearing, so um, I will wait for questions or responses until after I talk about this, and then you know we'll have any additional questions at the end of the meeting if there's anybody else that's on. Um, and when you do respond, we'll limit that to two minutes. So um, recently it was brought to our attention that a few things need to be addressed before the planning board is able to sign off with a certificate of compliance, okay? Um, there are silt sacks that need to be removed, stormwater system needs to be cleaned out, and the catch basin with the silt deposit needs to be stabilized. Now, I understand that it's a difficult time of year, things may be frozen, and you know the silt sacks are probably still in place for a reason, I would, I would think, and as well as the... Um, stormwater system. It probably hasn't been cleaned out for a reason. I don't know what that is, but it may be premature to do that. Uh, you know, we, we may, we understand it may be difficult to do it. You know, I don't know if the ground is frozen there, but at any rate, um, we can't do that until then. So, and it's also come to my attention, something about which I'm not even going to address today because we just got that today. And that's something I'm not even sure whether that's under our purview. And it's something about obstructions in an easement area. So that will have to be addressed at another meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So, you know, aside from that, we did get a good peer review. I don't think there's anything 
th that's disputed with the peer review. It's just a few minor things, a few housekeeping details, Mark, that need to be cleaned up before we're able to do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, at that point, I don't really have anything more to say about that. So if you want to respond to that and then anybody else. Certainly. Uh, yeah, so just to uh, uh, make it as clear as possible to the board how this process works as it's been explained to me by my engineer and by my excavator, uh, both have been doing this for decades. Uh, there are issues that will continue, uh, maintenance issues that will continue at the project forever. So uh, you're gonna get siltation because of the sandy soils. Everybody in Deerfield who's in those sandy soils has siltation on occasion, especially in the summer where we had no, no rain or very little rain causing drought circumstances and that caused some additional siltation. The siltation that we had at the beginning of the project was uh, handled very well. And any siltation that's there now isn't from construction, it's from uh, environmental issues that are going to continue to plague the plague everywhere. So we left a silt sack in place inside the most southern basin. And the reason for that was that was the last area that we saw, or an area that we saw was having difficulty uh, or having silt uh, occur. It wasn't, from, uh, it wasn't from anything we were doing. There had been a staircase uh, we had done in the construction of the project. There was a staircase that was installed for one of the neighbors. And so doing that, the ground was disturbed. Uh, some silt occurred got washed down into the swale and uh, went down into the, into the basin. So uh, in discussions with the engineer, we decided to kill, keep the silt sack in place there. They're very easy to clean out. It doesn't take a lot of time. And it made more sense to have the silt sack there than it made sense to take it out. So I would suggest to the HOA, which is me at this time, that uh, we leave the silt sack there uh, until we feel comfortable or until I, as the HOA, feels comfortable that the ground has... Um, uh, gone back to grass enough that we're not going to have additional siltation going on. So this is an ongoing maintenance issue. It's not a construction issue. The other is this, I don't know where this came from. The storm basins haven't been cleaned, but they've been cleaned twice now. So all the catch basins in the project have been cleaned. Uh, the, um, the dry wells in the uh, infiltration basins have been checked but because we kept the silt sacks in there to make sure we didn't have uh, silt going into those dry wells, they don't need to be cleaned. Uh, we've already had them inspected by the company that does the cleaning. Um, and stabilizing the silt in the basins, the only area we have any silt is the one I just referred to. This did not occur because of construction. This occurred because of work being done on the back of a couple of the units at the request of the homeowners with they added on to their units. Um, uh, me as the HOA, I have gone out there at actually at my cost instead of at the HOA's cost and taking care of that siltation. We, we made sure that we dug the infiltration basins a little bit low because you're going to get siltation in these things. There's a very small peninsula or island of siltation um, at the, at the um, culvert coming into that south infiltration basin. That will get covered by uh, grass. We'll see that in the spring. There's one other thing you, ha you had mentioned that is um, we have, I think two trees that died after we installed them that I feel are my responsibility or Regis's responsibility as the, as the uh, custodian over here, the developer. Uh, um, they happened on miscommunication when I was leaving the country for a while. Uh, that sounds so <laughs> wonderful. Um, I had sent an email to one of the, my employees and asked them to make sure that the trees were watered by our landscape company okay. Okay. In, the, in the areas where the homeless couldn't get to them. That didn't get passed along. So we had two trees pass away. There might be three that died. Right. So well, this well, spring at my... Is there any yes. way to wrap this up? Because the two minutes is over and we like to give people equal time. And, you know, just plus to let you know, we did confer with our... Um, our attorney and she said, you know what, you just have to, you have to clean up, clean up, get rid of the silt sacks, make sure that if, if that means you send us a letter in writing saying silt sacks are gone. I mean, once the silt sacks are gone, you know, this may not happen until spring. So, you know, we understand that. They, 
they won't be gone. The intention is to keep them there as 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 a HOA. I don't want them taken out. I mean, there's no well, reason to you remove. Know, them. Then, then, it, then maybe you take them out, and the HOA has to put them back in. I don't really know how you know how to, how to deal with that, but I don't think we're going to be able to solve that this tonight. Well, I don't understand what the issue is with the silt sack regarding the approval of the subdivision, uh, the infrastructure. Well, the reason why is because we've, you know, we've gotten complaints that the silt sacks are still there, that things need to be cleaned out. We just, we want to, we, we want to make sure that the project is done and so that you can turn it over to the HOA, because I'm sure you're just as anxious as everyone is to do this. So we may, we may have to revisit this at another meeting, um, you know, when the weather's a little better and you know, at this point, I don't, I don't know what else to, to say about this. Well, I've tried to express to you that the silt that is remaining, which is very minor, was not caused by construction. It was caused oh, by no, work. I, I understand that. So and why I, would we be responsible as Regus to remove it yeah. when it's done through construction and uh, is the requirement of the HOA to maintain? And I know that there is, there is a plan in place and that has to be monitored and at any time the DOT and CONSCOM can go and check after it's, after it's turned over to the HOA to make sure because they have to do a maintenance plan. So I get that. So, I mean, you know, it's, it, as, as you said, it probably is going to be something that continues to happen over time that just needs to be managed. But it has has nothing to do with our construction no. of it. This has to do with the no. HOA. I, I understand that. But so. Why would you hold up? Why would you hold up approval of the project uh, infrastructure for something that's a requirement of the HOA? They're supposed to take care of many things over there. That well, you know, at this point, maintain uh, many to, things as the HOA. I'll probably have to stop your public comment. Get public comment from anyone else, and I'll, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to look at this again. You know, I'm 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 sorry. I know that you want this done. Believe me. <laughs> I, I'm I, I want this done. I want it done correctly. But this is incorrect. It's material. It's items that have nothing to do with the infrastructure construction. So you're holding up the approval because of things that are required by the HOA to be maintained. You know what might be helpful is if I can get something in. Right. Slippery slope here. That's explaining this. Um, Bob is Bob. Our building inspector is on. I don't know, Bob, if you have anything to add to this. I don't think he's on video. Well, I mean, I. Oh, he is. I don't know. I I didn't realize. First of all, the catch basins have been cleaned out. So I guess if if you have something from the company saying they are cleaned out, then that would be helpful for that yeah. part of it. Because because uh, you said that they were inspected and they don't need to be cleaned out. That's fine. That that would satisfy <laughs> that part with the catch basins. The silt sack that, I mean, I feel both sides of that, you know, I mean, if the silt sack needs to remain, then, and it's a maintenance issue, then I think that's a decision up to uh, the planning board to make. I mean, doesn't, or you remove it and then it gets put right back in as you suggested. Um, Ridiculous. I don't know, they are very minor things, that's all. And right. they are maintenance issues. No, Bob, I think that's a great suggestion. So Mark, you know, if I, I know, I know it's a pain, but if you could just put in writing, yes, it, uh, the stormwater has been cleaned out. The silt sacks are in place for a reason. Um, if the HOA wants to remove them, hey, go ahead, <laughs> remove them. But there's, they're gonna have to, they're, they're gonna end up having silt, but they're, they're there for a reason. Yeah, and if I'm if I may, I, I think that would satisfy the town's obligation if 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 you just put something in writing saying that they need to remain and that the dry wells or they were inspected because you know I don't know that's what the issues still seem to be remaining that have been I think brought that would to everybody. Be fine. So, Mark, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to. I I would really like you to enjoy the rest of your vacation when you get back. If you can put something in writing, send it to us and we can, I don't know if we can address this at the next meeting. Annalie, do we have time? We can put it on the agenda for our February meeting. 
I'd have been happy to have it for this meeting, but I did not receive any information regarding these supposed issues until Friday afternoon. I know. So yeah. we have done the best we can by me contacting my contractor and by contacting my engineer. There are several other issues that came up as well that appear that have been un understand now that they aren't issues. I don't know if that's the case or not, but we saw a letter from Mr. St. Peter, as well as a letter from you stating other issues as well. Do not want to, I'll, I'll address all those in the letter to the board. Right, right. No, it wasn't a letter from me. It was a letter from Mr. St. Peter that was sent to me that was then distributed. I see. Well, there's right. two then. There appears to be two letters from him. Yes. I'm happy to answer all those, but appear, apparently that's not of interest tonight. So I will uh, put those answers. I have them from my engineer and from the, uh, the contractor. Um, I would like you to understand understand that the, well, I won't go into it because you don't want to go through that tonight. So um, I find this very disconcerting that the approval of the infrastructure is being held up by one person's beliefs that certain items have not been maintained correctly or done by the, the, by the uh, developer when as we've already made clear to him and to others multiple times that this is a maintenance issue that will go on with the HOA for a very long time. So I will confer with my account or my attorney and my engineer and my uh, excavator as you have consulted with your attorney and we will decide what, what position we take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Any other public comment for this, Bruce? Go ahead. If you please come sit down. State your name. Your address, please. Bruce St. Peter's, 19B Snowberry Circle. I'm sorry, I have to... Uh, and two minutes, please. Pardon. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have to uh, hold this project up, too. Uh, I am quite concerned that the catch base, uh, the uh, dry wells have not been cleaned. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I mentioned the silt sacks behind lot 16. Uh, that one does not operate at all. That silt sack is plugged up. Um, I would like to see a certified letter that all those uh, catch basins and drywalls had been cleaned from construction. Um, since I know in one catch basin, there's a two quart liter bottle been floating around for probably a year now. And the other one has, uh, has con another one has concrete uh, pieces in the bottom. So I would like to see a certified letter from somebody that has inspected those drywalls. I don't have an issue. I personally don't have an issue with uh, 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 silt sack. Mr. Whiteman is per, uh, perfectly uh, in line with that. What I do have an issue is they may not have been removed and they may not have been thoroughly inspected for buildup of silt. My other question, thing that just came up today is I see that uh, Regus LLC, Mr. Matt, has changed the access, the easements on a deed that was filed December 28th that are different from the original definitive plan. Uh, inside of that easement, uh, there is a row of arborvitaes. And also with that easement, the easement now would require any heavy equipment to drive over the oil water separator. And uh, you know, if, if it needs to be done, and from what I understand that they may, may or may not need some heavy equipment renovation you know, in a 10 or 15 year period. And I'm not so sure that those aren't like a septic tank that you start running heavy equipment over the top of them that they will collapse. But that is uh, that is where the easement, uh, the only easement is in the north uh, uh, basin right now. The uh, easement that was out of the driveway and up into the basement uh, basin was not over the oil water separators, and that is marked as one to be re uh, that easement is marked to be removed. That uh, is two minutes. Changed around, and I don't think that's any big deal. Right. But those those were the yeah. only comments okay. that and I. We do to have make. that in writing. Yeah. So, so right. and if you need more elaboration on it, um, you can contact it because I think it's I think it's self explanatory. I think I put the page in the book and so forth. Yes. I think that was okay. done. I think so. Mr. Whiteman will address that along with the other issues from okay. tonight, and we will sure. revisit this on our February meeting, and hopefully everything will be in writing. For that meeting and prior to the meeting, it would be helpful if we, if we received that. 
So I appreciate both. Of you it would be, I'm happy to have it prior to the meeting. That'd be not, not a problem whatsoever. I'd like to know if there's anything up, up Mr. St. Peter's sleeve that's not going to be told until February so we can hold it up for another month. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I think we'll, we'll move on to our next Thank you. item. Thank you. Thank you. I hope um, you have a better trip on the way home, Mark. <laughs> thank you. Have a good night. Access Department bylaw, um, yet again, another draft. Uh, Kathy Sylvester, who's been working with this diligently, Kathy? Yes, yeah, so we um, presented this to uh, town council, and you can see a lot of the remarks. Most of it is uh, simply just making some changes for editing purposes. Um, There, we, we are going to eliminate a couple of things in 3910 number four. Uh, I talked with Chris Curtis and he thought we could eliminate that line rather than trying to explain it further, but um, simply what that means is we're just trying to, you know, make sure that everybody comes into compliance with the bylaw. Um, the definitions, there was the question by uh, council about whether that should be put in the regular bylaws under definitions, but since they're being redone, the, the uh, bylaws we looked at, we're going to leave that up to that committee to decide where to put the definitions. Um, let's see. There was a question about 3920 and the, the size of the ADU. As we discussed at a prior meeting, we're not going for a simple majority vote. We're going for two thirds majority. So the language is in there is what we want. Uh, there is other language you can put in to get a simple majority vote at town meeting, but we opted not to do that because it was too restrictive. Um, I did talk to Bob Walden also about uh, this addition that town council put in under 3960 that was added. And uh, he would like to keep that language in there because it gives more teeth to the enforcement. So that will stay. Essentially, there's not too much left to do. I mean, we, we could keep going over this till like the next century, next century but um, I think we've got it. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a few um, edits and then hopefully be ready for public uh, hearing next meeting is the hope, yeah. Okay. Denise? Yeah, Kathy, I mean, th this is great, but you know what, track change, this is great, but I find it extremely, <laughs> Confusing, right? Confusing yeah, it is. Read things and yeah. do it. So for the next meeting, would you? Oh, it won't be like this. Without track changes, just okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be in its entirety, it cleaned up and and ready great. to go. Yeah, I think thank what, you. What we will be voting on tonight is that this draft go to public meeting mm -hmm. next week. Yeah, next right. week, next next month. month. Yeah, with a few changes that I um, that I mentioned. Um, See if there's anything else mm -hmm. in here. Let's see. In 39, comments on? There, there is a couple things. 3932, Chris Curtis asked about where it says accessory apartments allowed special permit. Town Council added the words in addition to those accessory apartments allowed by right in section 3931 above. Chris said he found that additional language confusing. Um, I'm not sure why it's there, so we may strike that. Just I, I'm not sure it's necessary. So it's just little things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So Kathy, would you like a motion that this draft, after it is um, sort with, of with edits, <laughs> cleaned up with the edits? 
then becomes the draft that is published for our public hearing. Sounds good, Annalie. I'll say whatever that was that you said there. <laughs> so yes, this is Andrea. I I so make that motion. Thank you, Andrea. Denise Mason. I second that. Any other discussion? All right, uh, Denise. Uh, Denise, yes. Andrea. Andrea, yes. Kathy. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Wachoba. Kathy Wachoba, yes. Emily Wolfpool, yes. So um, we will uh, send this uh, cleaned up version to uh, Amy to post uh, for our public hearing next month. month. Yeah, great. Can I just make a comment? Thank you to everybody who's worked on this. I think last time I just said, hey, thank you, Kathy. But I realized that more people worked on it. A so lot I of appreciate people. all of A lot of people had input that's in got this. into it. Yeah. There's a lot. Thanks. Yeah, yeah thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, last item under old business. We have been looking at various times at our planning board roles and responsibilities. And... Um, have a final copy here. I mean, it seems to be kind of a work in progress often depending on uh, changes in, especially in town staffing and, and job descriptions. Um, uh, one of the things that did come up certainly at our last uh, special town meeting was this question of us following our charge in our um, Deerfield uh, bylaws that we uh, advise on municipal improvements, that we respond in a timely manner to any plans for external public buildings, including location, alterations, et cetera, by the select board. Um, and our concern certainly last spring was, or was it spring, fall? <laughs> um, how can we sort of advise on these things if we haven't really been, um, you know, informed about them on a more detailed basis? So the closest that we've come up with right now, and this is a bit of an opportunity for some planning board discussion, but we do now have our Connecting Communities Initiative um, group, CCI. And um, those that group right now is in particular really working on um, municipal improvements. Uh, Denise is the chair of CCI. I'm also the planning board <clears throat> representative. And um, we can make sure that we keep an ear to anything that might need to mm, that, that that might need to have the planning board informed upon. I mean, certainly we don't want any big power grabs for how we're getting involved in this, but there's a responsibility in the in the bylaws that we're supposed to be involved, then we need to be involved. Mm -hmm. So other comments about that? Maybe me in particular? Yeah. No, I'm just going to say that considering that three people from the planning board are on active participants in CCI, I don't perceive that as being a problem. And the whole the whole idea behind CCI is to have better communication, collaboration, and innovation among all the boards and committees in Deerfield. So I think that we are achieving that. Good. Any other thoughts about that? Okay. Good. And I think, uh, again, as we've got these uh, really excerpts from the assistant town administrator and the building administrative assistant, we have excerpts from their job descriptions, but I think to some degree, since both of those positions are somewhat new or newish, um, those are still sort of works in progress. So those most likely will have some adjustments as things move forward. Okay, thank you. New business, we have an ANR 105 Pine Nook Road. And let's see, I'm not sure who is um, representing that. Is that Mr. Malloy? Or 
is no one representing it? No, maybe you flashed in and out, Mr. Malloy, if that's you. Uh, I guess I can say I'm I, I'm I'm working with the Rogers family on this. Okay, so um, I mean, in general, or maybe Mr. Malloy, you with Mr. Walden, our building inspector, could just give a um, very brief overview of uh, the. And our request, I can share a screen if need be to see the map. It is um, here's the yeah. <clears throat> this the uh, the survey is just is just re-identifying the um, the the land owned by the Rogers family is in APR, and this is the sixty thousand square foot exclusion for the house building lot. And this uh, uh, site plan just shows, or this survey just shows that that carve out of the sixty thousand square feet, the one point three eight acres, um, that is going to be um, uh, that is just going to be excluded from from the APR land that they own that surrounds. Uh, the 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 farm site itself, or I mean, I'm sorry, the the residential house itself. I'm I'm sorry, I, I'm having a little bit of difficulty, sort of understanding. Um, if we were to look at this map, or yes. this this map, um, could you please? <laughs> it's hard with me and my cursor and you <laughs> over there, yeah. but. What exactly are we talking about according to this? Do you, would you um, see where you, the area that says locus, that is, that's the, that's the exclusion area right there. Locus. That, lo that, that right there is what is the, um, uh, is the 60,000 square foot exclusion from the APR. That is what this a &R is for right there. May, may I ask a question? Is the septic reach field across the street? Yes, it is. <clears throat> and the reason for this uh, exclusion? To sell the house. Oh, okay. Good reason. Um, Mr. Walden? Yeah, I saw not no issues with it whatsoever. I mean, it. it's crazy. What they did is all legal lot, and I didn't know the reason behind it, but I, I, don't, I don't take any issue with it. I don't see no problems with it. Certainly is access for um, emergency vehicles and all of our criteria for a and R. so. Okay. Yeah, everything's, everything's there, yeah. Again, I'm still confused about the fact that the septic um, leach field is not included in the property. What if... Well, it's that that's always been like that. I mean, there's an easement to get to it, as I I remember from the past, an issue with that coming up. The septic itself in, in the leach field is in land that is classified as a, under APR. And there is um, uh, under the current ownership because the family owns it. But if there were to be a conveyance of the house, uh, there will be a license uh, that will grant a, a new owner of the house access to the septic. Right, and when I would look at our a and requirements, um, we primarily have to look just at access for emergency vehicles and, ooh, Bob, remind me, what are the other, there's two other requirements that we look at. Well, that I would have proper frontage. I mean, it has, Proper frontage and it's an existing house, an existing lot. They're just excluding that from the protected land so they could, well, sounds like so they could sell it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, it's a legal lot and has access. And the leach field on the other side of the road is fine as long as if they did sell it, the new owner has a way to maintain it. But that's not, I mean, it's not for. 
Right. So it's it's, bit, so some part of some agreement should will have to be included about that. Yes. If it's to be sold, if it's to be sold, yeah, but but they own all the land, so they're really just def redefining their lot lines yes. is what they're doing. Right. But if they sell the um the, you know, if they take this exclusionary portion and sell it, um, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, it if if that excluded zone area is sold uh, under um under the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture and Resources. Yes, a license will have to be attached to the septic area for the owner of the the house to access the the septic and leach field. I see, and that is stated someplace else. It wouldn't be stated, say, as a condition of this A and R. No, it would not. It's not required. Okay. okay. I mean, legal legally, the house has to have a leach field somehow. So you can't sell the house without it, really. Yeah. Good questions. Thank you, Andrew. Any other questions from the planning board? All right. So our uh, motion would be to endorse this A and R request. Mm -hmm. I make the motion to endorse this A and R request, Kathy Sylvester. Denise Mason, second that. Any other discussion? All no. right. Uh, Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Uh, uh, Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. And Emily Wolf Cole, yes. So we are endorsing your and our request. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank Bye. you. Have a good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, we have request, uh, received two requests for letters of support. And um, fortunately, our esteemed Andrea Liebson is on both the planning board and the open space committee. And um, you are the open space and recreation committee is requesting approval of the plan by the planning board. A letter of support. A letter of support. Okay, thank you. Right, um, that we have reviewed the plan and support its submission to the Office of Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. I mean, one of the things that uh, certainly it's a very comprehensive plan. You've been giving um, good updates about it, Andrea, all along. As I look at um, a number of the aspects of the uh, the action steps. Uh, I mean, nothing is before 2024, but um, I'm struck with, you know, most of these, uh, like A1, we're talking about adopting a ridge, Deerfield Ridge Protection Bylaw. Uh, recommending, we are recommending. Recommending, right. Uh, A5 that we, um, our, the planning board should, you know, review the potential of um, looking at um, uh, clustered village center development in order to preserve space. open space, which is something that we've had uh, discussions about otherwise. My concern really, which is the planning board, I mean, this doesn't have to do with endorsing the plan. It has to do with, here's a great plan. How's it going to be more than just a great plan? How are we in fact going to put this on our calendar and um you know start addressing these things one way or another andrea <laughs> shall i start um the open space committee will take it upon itself to do some of the things as you notice in this huge table of uh recommended action steps it it mentions the responsible board or group and sometimes it's the open space committee itself that is re is responsible. We also um, prioritized which things we thought should could could be done the first or sooner, and which things would um, take more time. This plan is to be in effect for seven years, so it is not expected that you know boom we would do all these things, but. Um, 
there's a lot of a lot here. <laughs> um, and I think this is basically the open space and recreation committee saying, look at these areas of town where we think we need to focus some attention. And occasionally the attention will need to be um, paid by the select board, by the planning board, by um, uh, the conservation commission. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. Um, it was our charge to make a whole open space plan. This section is one part of the plan. The plan is 200 pages long, <laughs> the report and plan, 200 pages long. So I would encourage um, different boards to look at what we've done and think about what they would like to achieve and decide whether, you know, what priority they would place it. In. So high priority or a lower priority. There's a lot here. Um, and I can speak to what the Open Space Committee believes it will make its highest priority, something it will work on soonest. Um, but I can't answer for the planning. And I wouldn't well, my fear, though, is say, for example, uh, B1 is that the planning board develop, adopt, promote a wetlands bylaw. That would be sometime in 2024. Obviously, it's not soon. 2024 is a long time from now. Not really. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's but, um, you know, how are we, as a planning board, going to remember in 2024 that the Open Space Committee has asked us to consider a wetlands bylaw? Well, it's a very good point. And in fact, one of the first um, high priority actions that the Open Space Committee is planning to work on is based on a, 20, a 2012 report. So sometimes things do get kind of lost in the shuffle. I don't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you know, and we, um, and the Open Space Committee consists um, largely of, uh, I think only one of us is not retired and um, we are all volunteers and we look and think, sure, my sure, goodness, sure, sure, who's sure. going to well, is it, so Could it be possible, could we ask the Open Space Committee as you are continuing to look at your uh, action steps that, you know, in one year from now, 2024, you come back to us and say, all right, planning board, we have um we we would like you to consider this year this wetlands bylaw um so that we get it back on our agenda because otherwise i mean i we have so many good plans in this town that just like you said 2012 you know our complete <laughs> streets i mean we have so many good plans so i don't you know and i think and we're all well intended but there's so much so much going on. So if if you could keep our feet to the fire, I will. I will endeavor to do that. I will endeavor to tell the um, open space committee this as well. And I will again push for a professional planner who would be doing keeping track of these things. Absolutely. And absolutely. Being able to gather the resources in order to um, work on these things. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We need help, Denise. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, I look at this, you know, we used to do the same thing at my work and, um, you know, it's basically strategic planning. It's looking at your internal needs analysis, external needs analysis, and then figuring out, and, you know, you've got the timeline, which is, I think is very ambitious. The whole plan is, but, you know, you have to have something to start with. And I think, you know, what you we typically do is you continually look at it, don't put it on the shelf and you revise it year to year. Did you actually achieve that goal? Do you need to move that up? And, you know, it's, it's really in collaboration with all the committees. So, I mean, I think you're setting this forth, but I think it now, you know, you need to have meetings with each group that's designated to work on something to see, is this achievable? And then possibly, um, you know, fix the timeline, you know, revise the timeline. Right, keep our feet to the fire. So, so number great. one, I understand about keeping feet to the fire. Please also notice occasion, uh, in, in some of the responsible board squares, the open space committee is not part of it. So mm -hmm. um, it, right. it, 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 it's 
it's a it's a concern to see who will and how will things get accomplished. Well, but if they're not in there, this is this is what open space has proposed, but I think it's still the open space responsibility to meet with the boards that if you, even if you're not in this square, you need to meet with the boards and discuss this to see is this is this reasonable for them? Because I mean, it's not like you can just tell people, well, you need to do this and you're on your own. So it has to be a collaboration. I but I, I, th I think I, I think it's an amazing system. plan. I think everything that that um, you know, one revision I would say is on B thirteen. Um, you've got that just as a select board. I would actually add CCI to that because well, we're okay. currently doing that. And one other picky thing: <laughs> the letter to Melissa, whoever that I forget who what that is. That's the person. This is the plan is going to go. Oh, for. okay, okay. The one thing I just have this thing, um, it says, wait, where is it? The letter to her, I'm trying it to is. think. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got the letter. I'm just trying to think where it says, I have this thing where it says, you have um, between all these boards and really when it's more than two, you say among. That was my picky. I'm but, sorry. I, it, oh, hold on, I'll find it. Instead of between, it's among. I yeah. can do that because I'll. Yes. Okay. okay. It should be a month. Got it. Thank you. Got it. That's the only okay. Thing. That's the I thing. didn't write the sorry. So okay. that's good. So um, may I have a motion to um, send this letter of support to the Executive Office of Energy and Environment? It, 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 no, it will get sent to FERCOG, um, and FERCOG will oh. put it together with the whole package. That is what we're asking. Yeah. For either um, paper copy so, that you give to me, and I get it would. to. Or yes. Okay. So I guess then the um, the motion is to um, give support to the open space and recreation plan as proposed in this letter. Is that good? Sounds good. I so move. Thank you, Kathy Sylvester. And Denise Mason, I second that. We got a team going here. Any other discussion? No. No. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leeson. Andrea Leeson, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Watroba. And Emily Wolfquill, yes. So um, I will work with you, Andrea, to get Thank this you. on the proper letterhead. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, and we'd love it to have it uh, by the end of next week, please. How about the end of tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for all that hard work. And this is a lot of work. It's a comprehensive plan. So well done. Amazing amount of work. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait till the, when, when we're going to do other reports. I will tell you something about it. Right. I mean, and I think one of the things, too, for the planning board to remember, as we often talk about wanting to have community engagement and involvement, um, as my recollection is that the open space survey actually had some fairly good response. And so this is a really good document that's indicative of things that the residents in Deerfield want to have. So we do want to keep would, looking at this. Yeah, I will discuss this in its All right. it reports. In yeah. reports, okay, thank you. Um, then the other request for a letter of support is from Senior Housing Ad Hoc Committee, uh, of which I'm a member. Um, last year at uh, town meeting, uh, CPA funds were um, approved for the Senior Housing Ad Hoc Committee to begin um, uh, market studies, uh, uh, resident surveys, et cetera, um, to uh, start significant work on moving forward with developing affordable senior housing in the town of Deerfield. Um, as often happens, or as certainly has happened post COVID, um, the amount of money that we requested last year is falling a bit short. Um, it appears that the senior Housing committee, they're they're finalizing this, but we'll be asking for approximately sixty thousand additional um, for the next um, town meeting to approve, and this would primarily go towards finishing work on the site evaluation, which very much will tie in with um, the work that is happening at CCI uh, with seen, uh, the libraries, uh, the senior center. Um, 
the church, well, that's the church, uh, town hall, et cetera. So um, looking at geothermal, looking at, and in fact, it's kind of cool because senior housing is sort of moving forward with this and doing some survey work that would be applicable to all of these other yes. things. So that's cool. And, you know, just a comment on that, Annalie, I think that's great because uh, once again, one of the points of CCI is not to have duplication of effort and to be very careful with our funds. And I think this is the perfect example of doing that. Great. Yeah. Yes, I think so. So if I could have a motion, um, what we would be looking for is that this is a, um, a planning board um, support of the uh, senior housing ad hoc committee's request to the uh, CPC, the capital planning, or not capital, uh, community preservation yeah. committee um, to, uh, to grant that we have additional funds. Whatever I said there, whatever she said. <laughs> um, can we have someone make a motion to support the senior housing ad hoc committee CBC I, application. I make a motion to support the senior housing ad hoc uh, request for CPC funding. Thank that you. was Denise, and this is Andrea seconding. Thank you. Motion. Any other discussion? Okay. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. And uh, Annalie Wolfcore, yes. Thank you. Okay, and I guess we get that letter to them by noon tomorrow, 5 p.m. tomorrow also, oh my goodness. Um, other business um, not anticipated, um, we have two items. One is, um, did just receive notification from uh, FERCOG that um, they are looking for applications for the DLTA funding. Um, as you recall, gee, several months ago, uh, the planning board wanted, decided that we would like uh, uh, DLTA funds to support the beginning stages of updating our master plan, which would primarily be looking at a resident survey. Um, my understanding if I, and I, I didn't look closely at this application, but in general, my understanding of this, the process is that the select board then determines uh, three top priorities that would be requesting DLTA funds. I'll have to look at that more closely, but first of all, is that still the, um, what we would like to request the select board support? Andrea, you the, for the uh, for the planner uh, or the support master. for a well, yes, for the master plan, yes, sure. I'm still pushing planner. Oh yeah, is, uh, well, I, I think it's also. I don't think a staff position is something that DLTA funds could support. Okay. Might be. So is this different than some money to support to revising our bylaws? Yes, that's different. For okay. revising the bylaws, we believe that we might have some funds left in, and that the next thing on the uh, the business not anticipated is our budget, but we might have some funds left at the end of this fiscal year and the beginning of the next fiscal year so that FERCOG can start that technical review of our zoning bylaws. Okay. Um, so that's different. Mm -hmm. the, this is mm -hmm. to begin the initial work for uh, doing a community survey so that we can update our 22 year old master plan. I have a question. Yes, Denise. So you, you said that the select board will identify three what three areas for what for DLT funding or for that three was, areas for the master plan? That was no three out three areas for potential 
DLT. DLT, okay. but that's <laughs> a vague oh, understanding exactly. from three or four Sorry, months ago. Yes. Okay. So, so then so, I, uh, well, then I guess Wednesday we got um, a request from DLT. Right. Okay. May, may I add another comment to that? Sure. You know, as much as we do want a planner, it's, you know, <laughs> We, even if we had money for a planner for the first year, you have to be concerned about what about money for the planner for the second year and the third year. So it's not just getting money you know, for, for one year. And that's my concern is that it has to be something that we're going to be able to have in the budget for, you know, for the foreseeable future. And you know, maybe it starts off as a half-time planner, but I want to, I prefer to be real. Right, maybe we can that. put that on two seconds from now. Okay. So right now we're talking about the DLTA. Yes, uh, these are the areas for DLTA. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm also trying to meet with Casey. I have a number of sort of housekeeping things that we're trying to follow up on. One of which certainly will be, I mean, she clearly understands the DLTA request process. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, I mean, this is a due date of January 27th. Mm -hmm. So we got two weeks here to um, put together whatever we need to do. It depends how extensive the process. Some things don't take that long. Anyway, I, that's why I'm well, mentioning this. It's, Andrea is saying that on this, this on the application for for DLTA, it lists town planner. I'll say as an aside. I mean, that, again, that's one of and that ties in. Uh, Barbara has sent out a request for um, our budget for fiscal year twenty four, which is hard to believe, but. Um, that yeah, starts in July of 2023. Um, and that is due to her also within a couple of weeks. It doesn't seem to say on this cover letter here, but um, pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty soon too. So the question is, and I have, I have done some Initial research, there's a possibility that another town might be interested in sharing a planner with us. There are many considerations such as, you know, do we just go with looking for it for one year and then we see what happens the next year or not? I mean, this year we had, excuse me, I'm sorry, 11,000 um, that was found in some a pot in the sky. And so our actual planning board budget was only 2000 and it's been seven. And that 2000 primarily goes to postings in the recorder and so, for public hearings. And so why was it cut from seven to two? Because we netted, I mean, uh, before our, 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 Gross. I mean, our, our amount was seven grand. Next this year, our gross was really thirteen grand because there was eleven from some other pot, and so they reduced two thousand for this budget. So I'm not really um, sure how to go about. I mean, first of all, I want to make sure that, as Denise, as you were saying, I mean, we, you know, how can we continue to have support for planner? Um, Ken Comia and Furcog with this 11,000 this year have, you know, been very important. Ken is working right now on updating our applications. Um, he's been a good, you know, resource for a number of things. So that's where I need to talk to Casey and find out specifically, you know, how can we make the appeal, especially to the finance committee and to whatever powers that right. be. So uh, so this uh, this application from from FERCOG for D for DLTA. I think you can say you can say would you like to help in, in these areas? And you can say yes to a lot of things. Yeah. But then the select board has to pick the top three. But it might be that they that 
that it, it is seen that we have other things beyond just the top three. And maybe Burkhag could say, oh, we were really interested in this one area. We'd really like to help you with this because that town over there also needs that help. And maybe we right. could. So, you know, maybe there will be some synergy with other towns based on, you know, what we say. So I don't think you can only indicate three. Mm -hmm. You can, you need to say what your top three are. So for example, under, let's see, there's even shared services here. Um, under zoning policies and plans, one of the options was, uh, is to create an open sp uh, space and recreation plan. That's what we did in the past year. Mm -hmm. That's money was, you know, gotten from yeah. DLTA to pay for the Burkhag, um, uh, consultant that we had who worked with us very, very closely. Huh. So clearly this year, we don't, wouldn't ask for that money. How much yet. money did we get? I have for no that? idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. I don't know. Yeah. How much money is available I for BLT for um, this? So, and then the, the, after, after the uh, open space plan, the next um, thing that you could check is master plan. So mm -hmm. clearly you do this. Um, and then there are a variety of things, including zoning bylaw changes and I just wanted um, you to know that there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of things that that right. Percog might um, has expertise mm -hmm. in might help with, and I don't think we should just pick right. only three things. Okay, with the, well, with I, I think that's a really stuff. good question. I to think ask. yeah, the next step is I think for me to talk with Casey and find out what's the process. So uh, this was sent. To, this was sent to right. me in an email, which I find. Interesting. Straight from Furcock. So well, maybe because you were involved in the open space oh, plan, maybe. that's yeah. the reason why you got that. I got it too. Yeah. You got because it. Because you were involved with the um apartment oh. uh, at X and three. Oh, oh there's yeah. uh, yeah. I have an idea. Yeah. So I, I I'm not sure whether it's a question Denise. or a comment. So, you know, in terms of the master plan, I know it hasn't been done in how many years, and I'm just wondering, and I, I don't really know for sure, but I think having a, you know, more comprehensive current master plan is going to be instrumental in accessing other funding. Yeah, that's so I think, you know, obviously that's incredibly important, mm -hmm. and eventually getting a planner. Yeah, yeah agreed. Well, I mean, it may be that um, after my conversation with Casey, that we might need to have um, sort of for, you know, I don't know, informational purposes, people to send back what BCC, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about requesting DLTA funds for these areas? I, I, well, I don't really know what the next... You know, okay, my comment for that is that we have a number of different things. We just talked about that with open space. How are we going to achieve all this? What I'd like to do is narrow it down, work on our bylaws, work on the master plan, work towards getting a planner and focus and not and not be spread out over too many things. I, agree. I think it's I agree. really I agree. agreed. Those and are the three things yeah. actually that we have. Really do it and not them. worry about yeah, it. Okay. Those three Kathy? things are the critical things. The yeah. master plan, the bylaws, and getting a planner. Exactly. That's it. That's all we can handle. I think mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and once we get those things, we'll go on to the next thing. Yes. Which might we'll work on the open we got till 2024 on the open space. That was cool. Right. So, so we got still January. So we gotta do this this year so we can be all ready for open space next. All right. That's very helpful. That's very helpful. So those are our three so, priorities okay. and we'll see. Just so you know, I just sent to you two this yeah. email. Thank you. That's helpful. The difference is I didn't look at it. Okay. <laughs> hey, can I just remind everyone when we're talking to still talking to the mic, even though we I'm just sorry. think it's us, because I do occasionally listen to some of the meetings online, and it's really frustrating when I see people talking among each other, and I can't understand what they're saying. Yes, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Among or between. Yeah. Um, is it, I, know, I know. Yeah. Uh, Amy, you have a comment? Uh, yeah, people were mentioning that they were getting letters um, regarding these things, and um, I think it's helpful. I keep records basically of all the mail. Um, if you have something that doesn't get sent to me, if 
you can send that to me and then I can keep it in the S drive and our files. I keep this stuff organized and that way we just have a record of it with the planning board, you know, with the other planning board records. I mean, unless you think it's not appropriate, but I'm, I'm just hearing that like, oh, there are letters asking this and letters asking that. And I, um, like I said, if it's something that you think is appropriate to keep with the planning board records, please forward it to me. Okay. Amy, I just sent forwarded you the same email that um, I forwarded to Anna Lee and Denise and that um, Kathy Sylvester had already gotten. We, we were not sure why they were sent to us. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, I think that's all of the other business that I knew of. So you, so you are comfortable talking to, um, to, uh, Casey about this. Yeah, and those three okay. things, uh, as you said, I mean, these are things that we've been talking yeah. about Just all, all year. year. Yeah. <laughs> so this is action. Good. Action. Yes. Um, is your hand still up, Amy, or is it just needing to go down? It's going down. There we go. <laughs> Bye. No, that's okay. Um, public comment. Doesn't appear that we have any more public with us tonight. Um, reports, um, this time we'll start this way. Uh, Kathy, do you have any reports? You, you did your... Well, I've been to one meeting for the CPC. We have another one. So we've got more applications expected than we might have for funding for the first time. Oh, wow. But we don't know for sure, but we anticipate that may happen. But um, it's pretty early in the process. So we don't know what we have yet. So I, there's not much to say. Okay, yet. that's good to know though. That's a good top level report. Um, Andrea, you mentioned you might yes. have some. Yeah. Open yeah. Space um, Committee wants to, to um, let you know that there is funding for trails through the Mass Trails Thing, which is a which is a, a Massachusetts um, granting agency. I and another member of uh, the committee attended a webinar about mass trails, and the uh, they have been doing granting um, gr grants. The application is due February first of each year, and so we completed pretty much completed the master, you know, the open space plan and thought, oh, okay, we definitely want to apply for a grant, but there's no way we can do it by February 1st. But we've talked to the people at uh, Mass Trails, the granting agency. The application has been pretty much the same for the last few years. So they anticipate that it will be the same going forward with some tweaks because all these applications are done online. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. writing something and so on. So we looked at this huge document we created, right? All of these million things and decided that we are going to apply for a grant of making sure our application is in by February 1st, 2024. We're going to spend the year working on getting the, all the uh, information we need for this grant. And we are basing it on what we learned from the community survey. People want to walk and they want to hike. And so we have a lot of resources in town, but they are not labeled. They are not identified. They are don't have any materials that go with them. They don't have parking areas near them. We are going to spend the next few months identifying what areas would be great for walking and hiking. And then we will gather information about what we would need to identify these things, kiosks. And I mean, I ended up talking to people at a printing company about signs and how many and how much they cost. And so we are going to, that is the first thing that the um, open space committee is gonna tackle. On the committee are um, four of us who've all written grants, grant applications over the years. And we are going to take this on ourselves. We are not, we don't, we may end up asking the town for some help, but we expect to not need to not um, 
be doing that. And so the first thing, walking and hiking, that's the first year that we're, uh, what we're going to focus on this year. And we have a variety of places all over town. Second year, what's really important is access to water and trails can include water, yeah. apparently. And so that is probably the second thing that we're going to uh, um, attack, attack, <laughs> approach. Realizing that we are all volunteers, that we um, have different interests and different um, amounts of time we can commit, but that's as a committee, we have decided to, to take this on. So I wanted you to know that's what we're planning to do. I think that's um, great. I love that. Uh, yeah. And using information that we got through the community service sur survey. So we can just want fix, people to understand. Can you fix the parking area at Pocomptic Trail <laughs> off of Ridge Road? Because okay, that's so thing. so so <laughs> write me a note. Please consider this one area because we are well, right we now. have literally we've, we've talked about the, the fact that we've all met on Zoom the entire year. And we can't do that. We're gonna have maps in front of us and we're gonna go places. I've actually taken one person one place. I've sent people pictures of things I've seen on my walks and driving around. We're going to be, you'll see us with our little notebooks. And if you have, you know, suggestions or concerns, please let us know. We figure it will take us the year to gather all the the Excellent. information. Excellent. I'm sure I speak on behalf of the entire planning board that if we can, if you can pass on to the Open Space Committee our kudos and appreciation for the diligence that you are showing. This is great. So I also want to point out that we had a wonderful facilitator through Allison Gage, who is the FERCON person that we got. She was terrific. And so um, they can really provide us with some wonderful services. Excellent. Good. All right. Um, Denise, do you have any? Other sure, I can, I can do a brief, just brief. Um, for CCI, we did receive, I don't think I said this last time, 75000 to do a feasibility study for the 1821 um, church in town to see whether it could possibly be used as a transitional place for senior services, aka the senior center. So that will be taking place hopefully in the next few months. Um, this was something that we started, but I wasn't really involved with, but I think it's really good. We did, the town did get um, approximately $40,000 from, oh God, I think it's community cabinet. And part of it is for, to look at town administration, to look at the structure, to look at the oh, gaps, God, to that. look, yes. Oh, and then also a big component of that is diversity, equity, inclusion, which is really good because it it, it runs in tandem with the committee, uh, uh, the DIG committee, diversity, what is it, DIG? Uh, Deerfield Inclusion Group. Deerfield Inclusion Group in town. So, I th so that's really cool. Um, I'm meeting with, I'm going to the um, MMA conference, the Mass Municipal, Municipal Association conference with the select board. And that will be at the end of January. So we're meeting at the end of next week to come up with a strategy of how we can meet with different legislators, different people to try and access more funding for Deerfield. And one last thing, we did have, um, the geothermal application, that's a federal geothermal exchange application. We got a really good review for that. And I just met with um, you know, a few people today and we're gonna respond to, I think the, um, the weaknesses on the review, there weren't that many and put them in this week. So we should be, I think we're supposed to hear about that at the end of January, but it's looking hopeful. Which, which, it's a geothermal exchange for the whole campus and then and then we're also going to reapply for the uh oh god what's the grant that's terrible i can't remember the name of the grant we're going to reapply for the grant that we did not get mm -hmm. and hopefully and it's uh, it's um it's going to be mostly for energy and economic development because our new governor and lieutenant governor are really focusing on 
energy and economic yeah. development. So, so, the, so the federal one, how, how much money was that? The federal one, the first one for the um, exchange, the, the first phase is anywhere from 350000 up to $700,000. And then if you're invited into phase two, then it goes up into the millions, wow. a couple okay. million okay. dollars, okay. which is really cool. So, and it's planning to start? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the first part of it will definitely be the planning and you know, that whole piece. So certainly, it. you know, with the geothermal, that's also what the senior ed, uh, senior housing is yes. looking into too. So yeah. you want to make sure we don't. Oh, no, 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 no. I think, yeah, CCI, I mean, Lily knows about yeah, that. We've, sure, we've sure. talked about that through CCI. So, okay. you know, so there, there's definitely a lot going on. Okay, Kathy, that. any reports for you, Kathy Wittroba? I have no reports, Kathy Wittroba. Thank you. Yep. Oh, can I make, and this is out of order and I apologize, but I just want to um, bring people to the attention, just it's a nitpicky thing that in the minutes of, of September 14th, the minutes talk about it being Snowberry Court, it should be changed to the condominiums at Sugarloaf. And I'd like to hear a, a motion to make that change. To the minutes. I so move. I second it. Kathy sold that. Emily Wolfcall. Right. Okay. And do we have to vote on that? Yes. Denise sure. Mason, yes. Emily Wolfcall, yes. Andrea Lipson, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Terrific. Kathy so, Wittroba, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Amy, if you could make that change, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Sure. And can I just ask who made the motion and who seconded? I, Emily Wolfcall, motion, and Kathy, Kathy Sylvester. Okay. I'm sorry, who second? Yes, Kathy Sylvester. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we did, uh, under the wire, receive a um, an update from Amber Gardens. I mean, it has, it's certainly is interesting how this Cannabis Control Commission in Massachusetts has just been flogging through molasses, but apparently um, provisional license was issued on yeah. November 18th for cultivation, so now the uh, proposed, you know, uh, new owners are going to be talking with the sellers to make sure that it's in line with current market conditions. So we'll yeah. see what I happens. They already like, own the property. Too. It's like they haven't so bought it yet. Yeah, that's, that's that's <laughs> what are you saying, Kathy? I, I thought that they already owned the property. Now I'm finding out that they're not even, they haven't even bought it yet. I know. I didn't realize it's, that either. It's the transfer. Probably was contingent right. upon receiving. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there, there are so many different places going, you know, coming up in Massachusetts. I'm sure that the commission is slammed. Yeah. With all these requests. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I don't think there was any other mail that we haven't already addressed. So our next sure. meeting is uh, February 6th. And I think we're set now. Um, and I have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn, Kathy Sylvester. I second that, Denise Mason. Uh, any discussion? All right, this time, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrew Leibson, yes. Emily Wolfcore, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Petroba. Kathy Petroba, yes. All right, so our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you on uh, Thank February you. 6th. Thank you.